Hello everybody! So we are here and this is going to be video number two of the Maverick Art Clay testing. Um, right now I'm mixing up some epoxy so we can have a comparison thing. I'm going to do a bunch of tests but we'll see how they all play out and finish up so I might finish one before the other. This test I want to test the um, painting before cured epoxy. I know for sure can be uh, painted, primed and painted before it cures. Um, I have done this before and I've had no ill effects, um, so it's always a bonus. So I'm very curious if the Maverick Art Clay uh, will be the same. Uh, the shrinkage does have me concerned about it, so we'll uh, give that a test and see how it goes. So mixing up some epoxy. Um, this should be mixed up by now. So we will plop this down on here. So we have that there. Let's smooth it out. So we don't have fingerprints in it. That is our epoxy. Now let's grab some of the Maverick clay. A little bit of this and try and get the same thinness going. Which may be a little difficult because it's so soft. And it gets pretty much the same amount so we can have a direct test here. We'll put that there. Also going to smooth this out. So we don't have fingerprints. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, well, I probably should have done bigger pieces, but we'll see what happens. If nothing happens on each of them, maybe I'll do another one where I do a bigger splotch of it because I don't know how much this would affect anything really. So what I'm going to do is actually use some craft paint because I think this is going to be the best way to get um, to see the results I'm looking for um, because they don't have much pigment in them there's a lot of binder so when you kind of put water in this it kind of breaks that up even more so it'll make crazing easier and I kind of want to have that because I want to see if it happens if that makes sense. Um, so yeah some water to make it even a little less stable just to see and we're going to paint each one with a nice light coat to see if we get any cracking or any ill effects so right there as I'm painting it it's kind of lifting the stuff itself because it's so water soluble um, so that's kind of a downside here um, that's provided this even work. Look, I, I look at this mess already. Like, seriously. What is wrong with me? Anyway, so let's do the epoxy, a nice thin layer. I mean, you can see how much smoother this paints because of that. It doesn't reactivate as much as it does with that. This does seem to take the color really nicely, though. Um, but uh, it's kind of, it kind of roughed it up. So now we have two full pieces. Uh, this seemed to have taken the paint, take, seemed to have, has taken, whatever. Takes the paint pretty nicely. Um, it's, it just roughs it up a little bit, but it absorbs. Um, I had a feeling it was going to be very absorbent, and it is. So we're going to let this sit until they cure up, and we'll see if we have any sort of ill effects of the shrinkage or paint or whatever. And we'll start our next test. Okay, so while I put that other test aside, um, I got a little carried away on preparing some more tests uh, that I want to do with this stuff. So what I want to do uh, as far as testing on customs and such, um, for I want to see how it works on prepping. This little mango was a second, so it's got a lot of pinholes under here. I want to see how it works um, with prepping uh, issues like this, these little things. I have a feeling it's going to be best used for this sort of stuff that's not structural integrity and stuff like that. So I'm going to try it on the pinholes here. Um, I've got a little full here that I'm going to try and sculpt a tail directly onto the wire and a main without an armature, um, without an armature there. Um, I have a little doodad guy here that I have an 
wire mesh armature under here and a wire under here with painter's tape. So there's just a bunch of different methods uh, that is normally used when you're doing this sort of thing. And then I want to test a uh, full-on super duper custom um, stuff. So you can probably tell what this is going to be, um, but we will sculpt it up and then you can definitely see. Um, so yeah, so we have this is a little briar wind dancer full thingy. Um, so it's got it's the briar plastic, stable matey type plastic. This is a more rubbery type plastic. I think I got this at like a thrift store. Um, it was like in one of those bags full of stuff. So we'll see how it does on the rubbery type stuff. Uh, mango is a resin, as you know, and of course here's briar stable mate here. So uh, let me go get some of the stuff and we will get started. Now, this I don't think will be permanent because you can reactivate it with water. So I have a feeling it's going to be a lot like the modeling paste when you use that for prepping. That you should use it, you know, at the end when you've already washed everything um, and you just need a little wipe off when you're ready to go for the painting. Um, but I mean, this is on the bottom. I'm going to probably sand most of this off anyway. But we'll see how how it works get real close so we can see what we're doing here. Um, you're supposed to wet it first, so we'll do that and we'll see how well this goes because I won't be able to get in all those holes probably. Um, the water is tinted from the previous test with some paint, but I know for a fact this does not hinder epoxy sculpt. That's the thing, like I've had a lot of experience with epoxy sculpt, so I know what it will and won't do. Um, so if something happens with this, I know epoxy sculpt wouldn't do that. So, so we've wet the surface here, and now I'm taking the Maverick clay, and let's see how it goes. Yeah, that's really nice, because you can kind of it forms like it gets really soft and like mushy, and just kind of presses in there. So that's pretty pretty awesome, because it's hard to get. Magic sculpt at this cons um, magic sculpt epoxy sculpt at this consistency to get it in there. So I mean, if this stuff does work, at least for this, it would be huge benefit. Cause it's go it's going right in those holes. It's really nice. Uh, let's try the big one over here. It went in really nice. So hopefully this grabs, doesn't shrink too much. Um, if it does, hopefully you could just add a little bit more and it would be fine. So we'll see. But I mean, right now, look how quick that was. I filled in all these pinholes over here. Eh, let's just do the whole bottom and see how it goes. I mean, it kind of pops out, but I mean, epoxy does that too, because, oh yeah, I could tell actually with this light that there's actually bubbles under this surface also, so this is all going to have to be sanded out anyway, but um, just for the test. Um, epoxy sculpt does come out of the holes too, because you have the air behind everything, so that's no different really. But here, I can just kind of use, uh, wet it a little bit, and then just kind of press it around again, and it kind of goes into all those holes. So that's really cool. Um, you can see it's kind of filled in all those holes. So that worked really, really well. Let's see how that dries up and uh, how it holds up, especially in this in this large hole right there. Because we'll notice, I think, more so shrinkage in that shrinkage from this hole than mostly anything else here. So, so I just watched those for them to come popping out again, and we just kind of press them back down. So, we'll see how that goes. So the actual process of that was pretty good. No real issue there. I'm making it, I'm doing another hole over here, just so we have two. We can see how that goes. I did not realize how many bubbles this dude had underneath. I was just too excited to grab him at Briarfest that year. I didn't even look at him. So, I filled that one a little over just so we could see how that goes as well. Okay? 
the next morning. Okay, these have sat overnight. They should be cured now. Um, and it doesn't look like uh, there was any cracking or anything on the uh, the art clay. Uh, here's the epoxy. It stayed even. It looks pretty much exactly the same. Um, this uh, looks a little rougher, but and it's also very distorted, as you can see, because of the shrinkage, just like the last test. Um, so it definitely distorts and shrinks. But I don't see any cracking or anything. So that's a good sign. So it can be painted before it's cured. Um, let's see if I scratch it. Okay. All right. Let's see what the epoxy does. All right. So, oh. <laughs> Pushed a little too hard on that one. Um, so the they both seem pretty sturdy. That's the epoxy. Digging with my nail. And that's the other one digging with my nail. It does come off if I dig. It doesn't come off the epoxy if I dig. Digging the epoxy really hard and then I can get it off. If I do the same pressure on this, it comes right off. So it's not as on there, as bonded as it is to the epoxy, um, but it stayed on, so that's a plus. Um, it, it is very crumbly though in this thin, uh, thin state. Um, even though I broke this the way I was holding it, it still takes a little more for me to snap this than it does the uh, other one. And this is also thinner than the other one that I flattened out. So um, yeah, so that that's that one. So I guess it passes that test for the most part. Again, not as good as the epoxy, but it passes the test. So that's good. And now let's see what our mango looks like. Uh, it does look like we had the shrinkage and recessed into the holes, especially you could especially see it there, how we have an edge now. Uh, how's the big one? Yeah, see how it shrunk into the hole. Um, it does look like it's coming away from the edge a little bit. The one we overfilled looks almost perfect now. Um, so yeah, this is probably going to need another layer. Um, other than that, I think it's going to work good for this sort of thing. Um, you won't be able to really wash this, I don't think, because it's going to reconstitute it, I bet. Yeah, I can feel it getting soft. Just put the water on there. Uh, yeah, and it's on my fingers, so it, it 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 would act. I think it's more like modeling paste. Um, you want to be done with your cleaning and whatever, and just use it for the little things, like the pinholes and stuff. But I think it would be a really good um, thing for that. You may just have to do a couple more layers than you would with modeling paste because of the shrinkage. Um, I, again, I wouldn't use it for any big structural things, at least not in my test yet some extra that we got on the side here but um, yeah I think for prepping pinholes and stuff it'll be really good uh, but uh, yeah so I guess it sort of passed those tests um, better than the first test but um, again we still have that shrinkage problem um, I love that it cleans up with soap and water I love that you don't have to mix it it smooths really well um, yeah, so I guess that's it for this. These two tests, we're still working on the other. I'm still working on the other tests, um, and um, I'll probably make another video with those because they'll probably take longer to show. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Um, stay tuned for the next test, uh, which will be uh, this little guy and a mane and tail on that guy, another mane and tail on a structure, and we still have a full-on custom that I'm going to do with it. So. Uh, yes, yeah, I don't know how I'm going to break those up, if they'll all be one video, or if the Maiden Tales will be one video and the full custom will be another. We'll find out as I go along and see how this goes. So, thanks again for watching. Uh, have a wonderful day, everybody. I'm going to go get some breakfast. Please like, comment, subscribe, share, all that good stuff, and I will see you next time. Bye!